Hello, thank you so much for joining me tonight for a midweek video. It's been a couple months since I've done one in the middle of the week, so I hope you have fun with me tonight. I thought we would go through and do some more recycling of old books again and just having a bit of messy fun tonight. So my inspiration came from these ink pads here. They came as a set of four and I've never had archival ink pads before and I've never used them before and I bought these a little while ago and I recently just went and bought another like six packs. So I thought we should use them. <laughs> These are acid-free, permanent, and waterproof inks. However, I didn't find they were that waterproof. They did absorb some of my paste later on, which you'll see, but it might have been because they weren't fully dry. I am using these uh, powders and crackles today purely because they match with my ink pads and they look really nice and go really well. So if you, I will share with you as well how you can use other products, so if you've only got like watercolors or ink pads, you can still 100% do this fun project tonight. Here's my old book. It was rescued from a charity shop and it has been fantastic for lots of projects for me. And I just go in here and rip out pages. Um, any old book will do, as long as it has writing on it, it's going to look really great in our project. And it doesn't matter if there's bold words or the line down the middle like I've got my pages because we're going to slightly cover it up. So in my little pot here, I have got some gesso, and it's quite thick. I don't know why, it might have got dried out, I'm not sure, but basically I want to have a slightly runnier, more watery um, gesso. So if you've got gesso, you may want to water it down just so you have the same effect. We want more of a water wash kind of look going on. I don't want to cover up the writing completely, but I want to kind of numb it out and dull it down. Once I have a consistency that I like the look of, then I go ahead and do all my pages. And I did quite a few pages because I wanted to have a lot spare um, and I had a lot of experimenting that I wanted to do before I shared with you my sort of final projects and the ones that I really liked. So I did have a lot of playing around with these pages and a lot of fun. Uh, and that's kind of how I do these sort of projects. I get messy and enjoy my time. So here are some of the pages when they're all dried. You do want to make sure you dry between each step before you move on, otherwise you will get some bleeding and some running. So the next thing I'm going to do is chop them down. I found it easier to gesso my pages so I had something to hold on to before I cut them to the size I wanted. So now I've got to cut them down to little to a sort of a front card panel size and I'm going to glue them onto some thick cardstock. Just my normal cardstock that I use for card bases is what I'm doing because my paper is so thin and flimsy and I'm gonna be adding on some um, media and stuff and I don't wanna get it wrecked and soggy. So if you want to make some embellishments and you want your embellishments to match with your project, you don't have twine and string or flowers or whatever you have in your stash, you don't have anything that's gonna match with the colors that you're kind of going with, I would just go ahead and pick out everything white, everything white that you've got in your stash, and then you can color it. You can do this with your ink pads. You can just make up a little bit of um, a like kind of color wash, put some ink into a spray bottle, add some water, spritz it on. If you don't have refills, you could smoosh it onto a surface, get it wet, and smoosh those colors in. Same goes for things like if you've only got watercolor paints, again, you could just make up a big sort of runny mess on a, a plasticky surface and you could smush everything in. So it's quite easy to dye um, any of your products as long as you've got white. If you've got a white starting base, then you can kind of make some embellishments that are going to match. So with it, in this case, because I've got my little powders, I can go ahead and put my powders onto everything and smush it in. And I'm obviously using gloves because I didn't want to have blue fingers all day shared with you at the beginning, I'm using my powders today, but if you haven't got them and you've only got inks or paints, then you can go ahead and do this with them. You can kind of drip them, drab them, wiggle them, squiggle them, all of your cards splatter on them and still get a very similar result using these book pages. So this is just a quick another way that you can do it if you have not got powders, um, which I'm going to share with you. So you get very similar results with whatever you've got in your stash. So here are all my colored products. If you haven't got any colored things in your stash that you want to use as sort of embellishments and toppers, um, you can go ahead and dye your own. And this is kind of what you get in the end. You get all these sort of colors that go together. And again, I'm using the same color scheme as those three ink pads that I shared with you at the start. So everything's gonna kind of have those three colors, but I'm going to use one of them as a dominant color on each card. So now we're gonna move on to using ink pads if you have not got any watercolors or any powders. Um, a very similar easy thing. So I'm just gonna get out a plastic surface 
uh, which happens to be my stamp platform. <laughs> you could use any kind of acetate, something that's non-porous, that's not going to absorb your liquid. So I had a quick look through my stash and got out my distress inks and found colours that matched up with my archival inks so that I was keeping them with that same colour scheme. Now all we need to do is go ahead and take our ink pads and smoosh them down onto our surface in quite a nice thick way. You could dab them on if you want as well. Take your water, spritz it as much or as little as you like and you can get different results. So you'll see here I'll do three little pulls and you'll see the different kind of ink patterns that you can get. Now again, remember to dry between each layer because if you're going to add more colours, those colours blend a lot faster if you haven't got the layers dried. So just make sure you're drying between those layers and then you can add another colour on. The colours will blend because they are water soluble, uh, but they won't blend as much if that makes sense. So I'm using the powders. I really, really love these powders. They kind of explode. and full of bursting colour. These ones do not have mica powder in them, they're just the solid colours and I really love them. So I am trying to keep all my colour to the left side of the card so that the right hand side you can kind of see that paper through. The left side is going to be sort of my focal point of the card. So on each one of these I am using one colour as the main colour and adding a slight little bit of other colour along the way just to kind of make sure that I've got that one dominant colour and that's going to be my focal colour as well. Now again I'm going to dry them all and make sure that I can have it dry before I move on to the next step otherwise I will have some blending and some um, mess basically. So you can see on the right hand side you can still see the writing from the book page and it's really lovely. If you are not a fan of the big bright bold colours like me then you can just apply your colour a lot lighter and with less sprinkling of the powder or less smushing of the ink and you will get a nice softer colour that's more translucent. So here are my three all finished. I've got the blue, the purple and the pink and I'm going to come in with some modelling paste. Now this modelling paste is not like texture paste. It's not going to go on top nice and thick. It adds more of a thin layer and it kind of is a bit more translucent. So you'll see at the end with the photos um, that you can still see the ink through it and it does absorb some of that colour from underneath but it's not quite as thick and as goopy as texture paste can be and it doesn't give you that sort of 3D dimension as much. Now I did create three new ones because I wanted to do some stamping before I put the texture paste on so that the texture paste can again numb down some of that colour and not make the focal point, the stamping and the texturing going on in the background. So I've got my three new ones here and I'm going to go ahead and stick them onto my card bases. So I've, remember I've glued on a piece of card onto the back of my book pages to make them nice and strong and sturdy and I'm just going to cut them down to how I want them to be. So some one I did I think about a centimetre smaller um, and then I did one that was like a strip down the middle and then a thinner strip down the middle if that makes sense just to kind of vary my cards a little bit. So now I've got my inks and I've got my cards all ready to go and I can do some stamping uh, in the background. This just adds a bit more character and interest to the background and it also pulls the card into the front panel. So I am stamping off the edge so that it's touching my card. Now you could go ahead and do it all on your card base, however I find I get too messy and I end up with all the colour going on the back of my cardstock which is why I do a panel and then add the panel to the card. So now my stamping is kind of blending that whole card together as one if that makes sense. I'm going to add a little bit more texture on just because I really like the script of this. And the reason I'm not using a block is because my card topper is a little bit thick from having added that extra card behind the book page. And therefore when I'm stamping I don't get off the edge as nicely <laughs> as when it's not on a hard block. So I can kind of wiggle my fingers and make sure it touches the edges of the card. I found this triangle, not triangle, uh, diamond stamp in that set that I shared with you a minute ago and this stencil I want to use has also got the diamonds so I thought it was a fun way to kind of incorporate them together. Now that ink is supposed to be waterproof um, and permanent and I don't know if I didn't let it dry long enough or what the case was but I go ahead and I add in my modeling paste again and you will see it sucks up the colour from underneath particularly I think the purple one it went quite bright pink. It doesn't bother me, it still looks great, but my look that I was going for was sort of the nullified look. So here you can see it's mostly dried and it's pulled that colour up from underneath annoyingly. 
But never mind, it's my first go with archival ink, so I'm sure I will learn a bit more along the way, but it still is a fun look to me. Now I had the pink flower and it wasn't quite the right pink, so I'm going to go ahead and dye it like I shared with you in the, at the beginning. We can add our colour on and we can manipulate what we've got in our stash to make it work for us. All my flowers and embellishments I tend to buy from AliExpress because it's nice and cheap and cheerful. Um, and yeah, I just really like them. So I will, if I can find them, I will put them in the description box for you. Everything that I've used today, if it's still available, it will be in that drop down box for you. Now I've recorded the footage, but forgot to press record. So all I've done here is wound up some of my metallic thread. This is also a bundle I got from AliExpress. I think it's a box of 12 metallic threads and they are so handy. And I've had the metallic threads for like two or three years now and they are still going. My last bit of this video is just all about embellishing and decorating the front of your card. So I'm carrying on with the theme, I'm just going through my stash and finding things along the same colour line. Again, remember if you don't have the colours, you can dye multiple things. So what I did in the beginning was I dyed purple, pink and blue using my powders and then I had all that stash there ready to go if I needed some colours that I didn't have um, or if I wanted some products of, in colours that I didn't have. Luckily, I have a big stash and I found lots of things that had colours that I really liked. So I went through and did that. And this is all about using up whatever is in your stash. So go through and look at those embellishments you bought years ago and you don't know what to do with. Or have a go at creating some flowers yourself out of paper and then dyeing them. There's so many things you could do. But your background is ready to go and all you have to do is chuck a bunch of stuff on it, throw in a sentiment and you're good to go. So this is my final one, the purple one, and I got these really cute little leaves. They are really thin metal leaves. Um, I got them from AliExpress as well, and I just thought they looked really cute tucked under that flower. Now, from the very beginning of the video, when I was doing some more playing around, I did another three cards. So I've got the same three kind of colors, but I added in more stamping and added in sort of more of a crazy in your face background. It'd be really fun to know what you like. Do you like more craziness in the background? Do you like more subtle? Do you like the very basic touch of colour? What do you prefer? If you want to share any of your makes, if you have a go with this technique and you want to share it with me, I do have a Facebook group which I always forget to mention and tell you about, which you can come and join me over on my Facebook group and share your projects there if you like. We welcome everybody and every kind of craft. Um, so do come over and share with us if you'd like to. So these are some close-ups of the photos of my cards when they're finished. I did add some crackles on there, the crackle gel. I added some sequins to some of them and just had loads of fun. I hope you enjoyed crafting with me today. Please do subscribe and like, and I look forward to seeing you on the weekend. Take care. Bye for now.